Hello, and welcome to our Creoparametric Overview. My name is Paul Dye. I'm a technical specialist here with PTC. And this is a demonstration that we typically show to people who are either completely new to Creo, or on an older version of Creo currently, or maybe just haven't worked with Creo in a while. And even if you're currently using Creo, but you're only working with the standard features like parametric design and drawings, then we want to introduce you to the full breadth of what's possible with Creo. In effect, not only what you build out in your designs, but also how we can improve nearly every area of your product development process. One of the first main areas that many of our customers work with is early concept design and exploring different product variations. So we've built out tools that not only promote exploring many different design variations, but also be able to access the full history of the design, which allows you to review anything you'd like to and branch off to really as many places as you'd like throughout that. And throughout that process, we have many tools for direct editing that facilitate that design exploration. So first, we have a freestyle tool for doing more freeform modeling, almost like pulling and pushing on a ball of clay to get to the intended shape that you'd like. And we also have a flexible modeling tool for making quick edits to geometry. And that's whether they're imported geometry from another CAD system or even right here in Korea. Another very strong capability in the early concept phase is the ability to optimize your designs right from the start. Instead of having to manually iterate through things like variables and dimensions until you get to the design that is simply going to pass through, well, we have behavior modeling to let the system automate that process for you. And with the release of Creo 7.0, we've introduced generative topology optimization. And this is a tool that allows you to input design requirements such as loads, constraints, preferred materials, even manufacturing processes. And Creo will autonomously build out the design for you before you make a single sketch or single extrude. It's a fantastic way to begin your Creo designs. And another useful capability that we have at our disposal is real-time photorealistic rendering at any point in the design process. Right from the design environment, just a click away, get some amazing shots of the model that you're building out that you can share out internally or with anybody else outside of the company. And one feature that's very useful is the ability to create manufacturable surfaces straight from point cloud data. We work with a lot of customers that do their initial concept design out in the real world rather than just on the computer. Well, that's no problem. If we're able to scan that geometry, our reverse engineering extension allows you to bring that point cloud data in, construct the surfaces, and build out the models to take further on. Collaboration is a concept that's been built into nearly everything we do in Creo, but it starts with collaborating with others that may not be in Creo. So we're able to import and export to many different formats, and we have specific collaboration extensions for those who've worked particularly with one software more than others. And not only being able to bring in that non-native geometry, but being able to make edits to it going forward. So even if it's just import geometry with no feature history, we're, stable to, we're still able to make meaningful changes to those models. And top-down design is a methodology that many of our customers work with. And our advanced assembly extension is all about facilitating that type of work and addressing the challenges that people typically see when their designs get larger and get more complex. So Creo allows you to decide exactly who can edit geometry, who can edit what geometry, and exactly how those changes get pushed down the line. And from there, if you need to share out the designs with partners or suppliers or other third parties outside of the organization, you're able to ensure that all of that intellectual property is secure and only share out the information you need and then keep the rest of that within the team. Effective communication is vital especially whenever it comes to taking your designs and sharing them downstream. And Creo, first and foremost, gives you tools for building out your drawings to be used for manufacturing. And then whenever you have things update, which they often do, have all those changes propagated down the line to your manufacturing documentation automatically, saving us a lot of time and a lot of rework. We also support a lot of the work that companies are starting to do in the realm of model-based definition, or MBD for short. In Creo, you're able to very quickly and easily build out your dimensions and build out all those annotations right on the model itself. We even have an advisor that gives expert guidance on the application of your GDNT, which can be very helpful for starting to work into the realm of model-based definition. And at the stage where you want to build out your technical documentation for your models, we have a tool called Creo Illustrate, which does 
just that. It's everything from illustrations to exploded views, even to full animations. And everything that you build out there, it can be fully associative to the CREA model. That means when the model changes, you can have all of your talk and your technical illustrations update as well. Another very useful application that we provide is CREA View. This is our free to use application that your suppliers and manufacturers or really anyone outside of the organization can use for viewing the parts, viewing the assemblies, drawings, you name it. So it's a very useful tool for collaboration, things like design reviews, and in general, better downstream communication. As I mentioned earlier, the ability to do real-time photorealistic renders that you can share out for any of your models. But another really great way to share things out is through the use of augmented reality and have someone be able to pull up the model and see it right there on their desk. So this is something that we've ingrained right into Crea Parametric where they can take that experience and that model and go through, scale it up, rotate it, take it apart. It's a very interactive and very easy to understand method of looking at those models. And it's better than just looking at a 2D image or a screenshot that you'd normally send off. So augmented reality is something that all of our users have access to now. Surfacing is an area in Korea where we have a lot of different options. We don't want you or require you to be a surfacing expert to be able to create highly controlled, but at the same time, very interactive surfaces. So our interactive surface design combines the organic feel that you get from freeform modeling with the parametric control that you oftentimes need. And as I mentioned during the conceptual design phase, we have a more freeform subdivisional modeling style as well. So this is useful if you want to create more lifelike surfaces without having to go through and dimension every detail of the model. So lots of different options depending on the surfaces you want to build out. Moving on to simulation and analysis, this is something that we've integrated to work right within the design process. And that starts with standard simulation capabilities, things like structural, thermal, vibration, dynamic, fatigue, and many others beyond that. We also have high-end fluid simulation capabilities built right into CREA and different levels depending on what level of detail that you want to get or look at in that flow. And one of the newest ways we have of getting a lot of the benefits from analysis that we want to build into that design process is with Creo Simulation Live. So this is our first tool that we've built out as part of our partnership with ANSYS. And this was done to put real-time simulation capabilities right in the hands of the designer. You don't have to have a PhD in FEA to be able to use this. No need to defeature, no need to build out a mesh. We simply just define the loads, the materials, the constraints we want to look at, and we get the results back from the study instantaneously. Some other forms of analysis that we have include assembly and motion analysis for your mechanisms. So if anywhere in your design you have a moving mechanism, be able to get insight into how it works. And we can see into the forces generated from that motion and really start to build out more of a virtual prototype here right in CREA before having to go through and do all that work out in the real world. Tolerance analysis is available for those who'd like to do different stack ups in their assemblies to see which parts or which different tolerances might be causing issues, or even the other way where we could possibly start to optimize around. And mold analysis is going to be hugely important for anyone that's building out plastic injection molded parts. You can even do human factor analysis to look at things like ergonomics and how well your designs work in the context with different human models. And even after production, you're able to take in and work with real test data out in the field to drive your designs right here in Creo. Or use computer-aided verification to compare the dimensions out in the world to how it was built and designed here in Creo as well. We have many different tools for enhancing your productivity depending on the area of the field that you're designing for. So Creo gives you capabilities to do basically everything around sheet metal whether it be for creating walls, bends, punches, notches, flanges, you're going to have a way to build it out here in Creo. Weld modeling is a feature that we also have available where we just select the type of weld that we'd like to use, select the material, and then we can see how it's going to work on the model that we're building. Piping and cabling are both fully supported in Creo. Started from building out the logic and the 2D schematic, we're able to use that logic to drive and automate the 3D harness design right in Creo Parametric. 
and then even automation of the flattened drawing, including all the information that you need for sending out for manufacturing down the line. We also have our layout tool, which can be used for taking pre-existing 2D files or even detailed drawings that you create right in Creo and using those to drive your 3D designs. And of course, if there's changes, have those changes propagated up the line to the models that you build. Specific to additive manufacturing, we have design tools like latticing to build out in your designs. These lattices create some very robust, lightweight designs that are not only structurally sound, but also very eye-catching and really taking advantage of all the benefits and world of possibilities that we get now through the use of additive manufacturing. We have tools in advanced assembly, specifically targeted at handling larger assemblies. So be able to set different levels of representations in the assembly and decrease the strain on your CPU while you're designing. and Really build out into whatever level assemblies that you need to. For those who work with framework design, we have a tool that's able to automate the creation of structural framework using comprehensive libraries for profiles, equipment, and joints. So anything that goes into that process, you're able to build out with the advanced framework extension. And then same thing for fasteners. Things like screws, nuts, bolts, washers. If you need to build one out, there's an interface that guides you through that process and automatically builds out the parts and assemblies for those fasteners. And lastly, with the release of Creo 7.0, we've included multi-body capabilities. And it's something that's going to be available just about everywhere going forward in Creo. And we've done this to enable many of the new applications that we've introduced, from generative design to real-time fluid simulation, even into standard design and everything you do there. Our approach to multi-body is something that you're going to really start to work with and really come to love. Preparation for manufacturing is something that's almost ingrained in the Creo design process. If you work with a machine shop where your designs are often getting put on a mill or a lathe, we have many different tools for building out the tools and the tool paths that often are required for doing that type of work. We have a progressive die extension specifically for those who do more punch and press operations. Everything from the 2D strip layout to the full 3D assembly with libraries and com components and working with different suppliers. So you're able to do that entire process right here in Creo. Another big area of focus that we have in Creo is in general additive manufacturing. And this is a complete game changer for many different companies. And it's something that we've put a lot of time and effort into building out here in Creo. And it works very well with plastic and everywhere into also metal 3D printing as well. Injection molding and casting is another area where we cover just about every step of that process. That process starts by analyzing the part that you've built, simulating the mold flow right here in Creo, and look for potential problems that might come up whenever it's time to build these out. And then we can take it through every step of the process, from the tool design, machining the cores and the cavities, even as far as the full mold-based design, really start to finish throughout that process. One of the biggest ideas that you'll see with Creo, and really PTC in general, is the idea of the digital thread. The idea of the digital thread is that the entire process from start to finish is connected. And this is really what separates Creo from other software that's out there. When you're building out your model, we have Windchill for being able to do data and product management, really make sure that everybody and everything is all on the same page and everyone's able to access and work with exactly what they need there. We then have ThingWorks, our industrial Internet of Things platform for either bringing in real-time data to drive your designs or to simply monitor how your designs are operating and being run. And finally, Vuforia is our suite of tools for utilizing the benefits of augmented reality, whether it be for servicing a machine, giving expert guidance over the shoulder instruction, or maybe just simply learning a procedure. Vuforia and augmented reality are giving an exciting and very effective way for getting your products into action. And that's everything that I wanted to cover here in our overview of Creo. And you now have the option of ending here, moving into the overview demonstration video, or move the conversation further towards any of the topics that were covered here today.